In this video, you will learn how to create a college basketball betting model using ESPN's BPI predictions ratings. Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now. I've got another sports betting video for everyone, specifically to ESPN's BPI predictions, looking at college basketball. So I have pulled up here, ESPN.com slash men's college basketball slash BPI slash predictions. And this has a game, this has an overview of all the games for today. And you can see that the ESPN does this a little different than how they do their NBA BPI ratings where they have a matchup quality and it's sorted from highest quality down to the lowest quality game. And so today we have almost like 80 games or so. So there's a lot to, lot to choose from as far as college basketball goes. And they have a predictive point differential and then a win probability. So a little bit more data as well to, to base uh, a betting model on versus NBA where you just get the win percentage. So here we have a predictive point differential. And so I can show you how we can take this and create a spread-based model. And then we'll obviously have the win percentage to have a money line. And then we can combine that win percentage um, into a parlay model as well. So a couple different ways to bet on college basketball using these BPI data. And this matchup quality is a really nice way to kind of sort your your bets and I think it's it's similar to the market with concept where it's looking at you know where there's a lot of confidence in games. So Kansas State Providence, that's a it's a really competitive matchup. So the quality is really high. Where if we scroll down to the bottom, it's probably gonna be some lower tier teams or just some really big mismatches. So if you're thinking about how to approach 80 games or 50 games on a given college basketball night, this uh, matchup quality is a really good way just to work down the list see if there's any betting opportunities that come up using the model. And then you can place that and just keep going down uh, and just, I guess, bet as much as your your time allows or what you would like to do. Um, so I just want to show you where we're going to get the data. And then I'll flip over to Excel and show you just a brief overview of what the model looks like. So this will be our copy and paste section of the, the data. And then we'll have similar to how I showed you in the MBA where we'll have our matchups, any manual adjustments we want to make to the, the win percentage, and then we'll get an adjusted win percentage. We'll convert that to American odds, and then we'll use this as our, our break-even odds. And we when we do our line shopping to see if any betting opportunities have longer odds than this column, and then we could place a bet using the Kelly criteria and know exactly how much to wager and what the expected value is. Then we flip over to the spread. So this is just going to pull the matchups in that point differential column I, I highlighted on the ESPN's page. And we're going to just round that just to 0.5 increments. And then from there, we're going to be able to type in what sports books are offering. And then you can dynamically know what would be a break-even bet based on the, the spread and then what the sports books offering. So I'll, I'll go into more detail and give some examples, but uh, just wanted to highlight that's something new versus an, the NBA model where ESPN just gives win percentage for NBA for college basketball. They expand that to give a point differential. And then the final, I guess, betting opportunity we have is to combine those win percentages and build parlays off of it. And you can build up to 10 parlays using this model. I'll show you just some some tips as far as how to pull that data in, what formulas to use to, to get your expected win percentage for parlay bets. So hopefully that all sounds exciting and uh, let's dive into it. Let's go back to ESPN and let's grab our, our data. So something I noticed when copying in the, the data, it's best to start here at the bottom and then just drag up to the top, get all the games that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and grab every single one, control C to copy it, flip back to Excel. And I have just a paste in section here, control V to bring that data in. Um, looks like it takes a little bit of time, just a lot of games to bring in and it's going to bring in icons for every single team that's, that's playing tonight. So scroll down, you can see we got all the, the games, um, but then we have all these icons that we really don't want. So what you can do is do control G. It's going to bring up this go to dialog box. You click special and then you will select objects. Click OK. And then it's going to select and highlight all the objects and then just hit delete. And that'll get rid of them because we don't need that in our file. And now we have all the games for today brought in, sorted by 
that matchup quality. So you can see that Kansas State Providence is our first game where we have a 55.7% chance of Kansas State winning and then 443 for Providence. And we convert those to break even odds, minus 126 and plus 126 with the matchup quality of 87.8. I have a, a filter in here where you can highlight where the threshold is for the, the matchup quality. If you've watched some other expected value or BPI walkthroughs, I, I like to always have about 50 as the minimum. But for this, I mean, 25 is what I've kind of looked at as far as where that threshold is, where the games below 25 typically are just uh, games that have a lot of disparity. You can see the 99, 98, 98, and 96 win percentages. So those are all going to be games that you're just not going to want to bet on. You can play around with that and see what the threshold is. Um, you can see we have some 98s, 97s above that. So I don't think there's a hard and fast rule as far as... Um, that minimum quality, you know, I would say play around with it, see what makes sense. I, I don't have a good firm rule, but um, just what I've noticed for sure, 25 and below would be something I would avoid. And then uh, I think just based on how many games are offered in a day and what, what amount of time you have to devote, you can kind of raise that threshold up if you just want to focus on maybe like the top 10 games of the, the matchups for the day, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, but just wanted to highlight that it is a little bit different filtering there. So I say we we go see what kind of opportunities we have on this Kansas State Providence. It's the highest quality game for, for tonight. So minus 126 plus 126. We'll flip over to Sportsbook Review and see what kind of lines are being offered on uh, that platform. Okay, I'm over on sportsbookreview.com. I have the money line tab selected here. So we'll scroll down to that Kansas State Providence game. It's about midway down the screen here, and we can see the different lines being offered. The blue highlight is going to be the the best odds for each side of the, the matchup. So plus one hundred five for Kansas State and minus one fifteen for Providence. So that plus one hundred five is a really good bet using the BPI model as our predicted win percentage. So you can see Caesars plus one hundred five. We can plug that in and just see what type of bet we should be placing on that. So Kansas State. on Caesars plus 105 so you can see our break even was minus 126 so according to to the BPI Kansas State's actually the favorite Caesars is saying they're the underdog where they only have a 48.7 percent chance of winning ESPN saying they have a 55.7 so that's where that the value is whenever a sports book has lower expected win percentage than what either um, an EV model using a sharp sports book like Pinnacle, or if we're using ESPN as our, our win percentage basis. So 55.7 is greater than the 48.78%. So that's where the, the value is. And according to a Th Kelly model using a thousand account value and a 0.25 adjustment factor, we should place $33 and 77 cents on this Kansas state to beat Providence. So, um, Pretty aggressive bet. That's where the manual adjustment could come into play. If you want to maybe haircut that 0.25, you can see that it's down to 21.57. So that's just, that's that's how to use the model um, with using a BPI prediction or any other, I guess, AI generated betting model. You're going to have a lot more um, betting opportunities than if you use Pinnacle, the Sharp um, Sports Method for expected value, just because. This is completely independent where using Pinnacle as your, your source of truth, they're going to be much more aligned with all the other sports books. There's just going to be marginal opportunities where you're going to have some expected value bets, where if you use something that's completely independent of the sports books, such as ESPN, there's going to be a lot more opportunities, but also the certainty of these one percentages being correct is, is much lower. So just know there's going to be a lot more uh, betting that's going to be placed using this model, but there's a lot more um, room for error. And um, it, you know, in the long run, there's, there's no guarantee that ESPN is more accurate than the sports book. So just wanted to highlight that, like whatever you decide to do with your sports betting, like the premise, if you're going to use ESPN's BPI as your, your source is that you think these win percentages are more accurate than what the sports books are offering. So just wanted to highlight that. So that's, that's just a, a word of caution. I would say just know that you can't just take these at face value and say, oh, well, this is a true 55.7% win probability. 
no betting model is going to be perfect. And so ESPN may not be right at all with their modeling, but that's, if you assume that that is the, the best proxy for the one percentage for this Kansas state Providence game, then you'd want to bet pretty heavily on Kansas state to beat Providence tonight. So that's the, that's the money line. You could go down. Like I said, as many games as you want to bet on pretty quick process as you, as you saw there, we'll flip over to the spread. So it's the model's going to go ahead and pull in all the matchups that we had on the first tab. So you don't have to do anything there and it's going to pull in that predicted point differential value. And then it's going to round those two 0.5 increments to model what the sports books offer. So let me clear out all this information here. So let's, let's use a different example besides the Kansas state Providence. Let's go down our list and maybe look at this, um, Georgia, Miami. So plus three, minus three. And so let's see what the sports books are offering. So we'll flip back to sportsbook review. We'll go to the point spread tab here. And then let's see if we can find that Georgia Miami game. Okay, so plus 6.5 and plus seven. Um, so let's let's try this. I'm guessing that's an error right there. It says minus seven. I'm guessing that's just not pulling in correctly. Um, let's let's assume that the the plus seven on let's go DraftKings plus seven for for Georgia. Okay, so plus seven, minus seven. So here we go. Is ESPN saying that Georgia is a three point underdog? But DraftKings said they were actually a plus seven. So that's a four point spread difference, which is quite a bit. And so uh, what I've done in the college basketball betting model for expected value is I looked at all the half point values for every combination for college basketball games and saw that nine per half point is a really good proxy for how much each half point is worth. So I'm just taking whatever the spread difference is times this this nine value there, that's where I got that. And so that converts to minus 136 odds and then plus 136 odds for Miami. So Miami, ESPN saying they only have, they're only a, a three point favorite where DraftKings is saying they're a seven. So you need to have much higher odds for, for that to be a valuable bet where the flip side on Georgia. So minus 136 is our break even odds. We saw that DraftKings was offering minus 110, which is pretty standard for a spread line. So $27.54 for Georgia to, to cover the, the plus seven spread. You can see that the sportsbook saying they have a 52.38% chance. Using this model, we're saying they have a 57.63% chance. So that's where the value is. Let's flip back just to kind of hammer this home. So that was at plus seven, but let's say this is plus five. So we put in five minus five, and you can see that the break even odds go down. So minus 118, but we're still getting minus 110 on DraftKings. So still a positive bet of $9.17. So that's how to use this. You could go through any of the games. We can, we can go back to that Kansas State Providence example. If I can find it. All right. So here are the we have 0.5 on FanDuel and the 1.5 on looks like every other sports book. So we can plug in and see 1.5 minus 1.5. So again, this is going to show up where in the state is the favorite according to ESPN. Every other sports book has them as the underdog. So three point difference minus 1.5 and then plus 1.5, three point swing translates to spread adjustment of 27 points, which equals our break even odds of minus 127. So that's how to that's how to use this spread value. So you can see you could take any of these plus 1.5 at minus 110, and that would be a, a bet to place. And even that 0.5 on FanDuel would be a positive bet. So break even odds of minus 118. FanDuel is offering minus 105. So that's how to use the spread. You can go through any of the, the matchups you want, and you can see that 
really open, you know, doubles your amount of betting opportunities that you have versus just using a straight money line wager. And then we can go down to the, the parlays. This is the last tab. Refresh our the pivot table here. Clear that out. So this is just taking a pivot table, sorting it up by highest win percentage down to lowest from our matchups for the day. And so from here, you can build you can build a, a round robin parlay for however many games you want. You could say we want TCU at 98.8%, and then we want Duke at 98.10. You could, because that's a two-leg parlay, let's do one more. Let's do Idaho at 96.3. So we just pulled in three really heavy favorites. And so the break-even odds on this is minus 1401. 93.3% chance of all three of those games hitting. And so in order to find that, you just take the, the product function and that's gonna multiply any of the values that you have in this table. So 98.8 times 98.1 times 96.3 gets you the 93.3. So break even odds of minus 1401, which is a big line. So let's, do, let's throw LSU in there too, just to get someone who has quite a bit lower odds. You can see that brought it down down to 60.1% chance. And so you go to a sports book and say, plug in those four and say that you're getting minus 150. So you can wager 68 cents on that four leg parlay. So that's how to, to build parlays. You could go down any of the matchups you want. If you if you like some that are you know, quite a bit uh, longer odds, you could look down here and see what what makes sense as far as built them out but i just wanted to highlight that you know, the odds the expected win percentage of the parlays i mean that goes down drastically you saw we were at we take this out we were at 93.3 percent chance we brought in that 164 and we're down to 60.1 so just know that the the impact of each leg really does diminish your your expected win percentage of these parlays so whenever you're building parlays just know like the the probabilities behind it and based on whatever your model you're using uh, it, it does compound pretty quickly to diminish the the chances of all legs hitting so just wanted to you know make sure you think about that when you build parlays that they are quite risky and uh, the more legs obviously the, the lower chance of them hitting and just make sure you have a systematic way of betting on them and i think you know applying the kelly criteria similar to what you would do with uh, any of the money line or over under a spread bets is, is the best approach. So that's all included as well. So I hope hope you found this helpful. I mean, you could definitely uh, build something similar yourself. If you're if you like how this model works and want to pick it up, I do have a link in the description that includes a, a bet tracker and a, a dashboard as well. Um, other than that, I uh, hope you um, are having success in your sports betting, uh, college basketball and NBA season. There's a lot of games, so just having some systematic ways to, to approach them. And to bet optimally is, is really the best way to bet and not just gamble. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing and God bless.